That's the beautiful bell I needed to hear. That means we're live, uh, the weekly webinar series. It's 9.01 on the West Coast. I hope you're enjoying your afternoon if you're on the East Coast. Always hit us on Q&A. Tell us where you are. Tell us why you joined. Are you excited about a triad launch? I am. Um, we had some um, uh, listeners or uh, you know uh, audience members from Jordan this morning. Man, that was awesome. Um, wherever you are, love to hear about it. And um, obviously, I'm Gary, we hosting of the weekly webinar series, and my good friend, Michael Barato. You and I have gone way back. I, I just love your uh, your perspective on things. To me, you're a chemist, man, at what you do. You're a sonic chemist, and uh, I, I and we appreciate all that you put into this because I know if you're involved, it's going to be good stuff. So that's right. my props to you. Um, you guys, uh, as always, I will get not only um, Michael's slide deck, but this recording as well back out to you guys. Anybody who registered for my weekly webinar series gets um, the data gets the stuff, meaning if you couldn't attend and you registered, you're still going to get caught up. So, and you guys all know me, you can hit me back um, and we could dive into some specifics or you thought about something a couple days later, but most importantly, take this data that I give to you and pass it to your team. It's like a, a great hour. You could sit down and lunch and kind of review what we talked about and so forth. So a lot of benefits there. Look at my event section for stuff coming up. I always got the best of the best on these shows every single week. I'm from Massachusetts and wanted to have a product to offer my clients, you know, for a unique audio system. Thomas, that's exactly why we're here. So on that note, I'm gonna turn it over to Michael. Thank you, Michael. This is our final session of the day. Um, thank you for joining us and uh, let's get to work, man. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Gary. It's uh, thanks for your kind words too. It's always been been fun working with you. Gary and I go back to, uh, our, our friendship goes back to previous lives. I, I was at Klipsch for a long time, Gary uh, being with Volleytone, so that partnership and obviously the Snap uh, one partnership and with Klipsch and now we're both here. So uh, And well, you know, should I tell the one really quick story, you guys? You probably all know this, but I think it was Michael, he came out and he said, it was San Diego, if I'm not mistaken, he yeah. said, I've got to have an In-N-Out burger. And oh, we yeah. drove to an In-N-Out burger, got him his fix, had a double-double and there you go, San Diego. This was probably eight or nine years ago. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. And I, so I'm from the Midwest. So we, for all you West coasters, we don't have in and out burger. So it's, I know it's kind of lame if you're from California, but got to have it every time I go out there. So I pre Gary, I appreciate you uh, giving into my poor dietary choices. So thank you. True friend there. Um, so today we are here to talk about the new triad P amp series V2. Um, you might call this PAMP or you might hear it called the PAMP series or PAMP series. I call it PAMP, call it whatever you want. Just know that it's the best little amplifier out on the market. Uh, my name is Mike Barato, the product manager for uh, Multi-Room Audio. So we have an audio product development team. It's four product managers, one oversees loudspeakers, uh, one oversees uh, streaming products. I oversee audio electronics, amplifiers, matrix boxes, and then we have a, a product manager that that does media distribution uh, as well as outdoor TVs under that umbrella. So we love working on this stuff. We all came from audio backgrounds. Um, yeah, let's get into it. So before we get into the product specifically, I want to talk about Triad and sort of what makes Triad unique. Triad is, is our premium sort of high performance alternative to episode. So whereas episode product, it's Workhorse product, it sounds great. Uh, it's budget friendly, a lot of value in episode. Triad is really for a higher end clientele. So someone with a little bit more of a budget to use, uh, they want the best of the best. They want great sound throughout their home, in their theater, in their TV room. That's where Triad comes into play. A big part of the Triad brand story is custom speakers that we build at our headquarters in Portland, Oregon. So as you see there on the right side, that is our um, uh, headquarters. It's a, actually a beautiful area. It overlooks a, a river. Um, it's great. I love going the triad because I can just stand outside and be in uh, beautiful nature. But one of, uh, one of the many things we are able to do there is full customization of cabinet speakers. So sound bars, uh, wood box speakers, home theater speakers, Again, going back to this high-end clientele, a lot of times they'll say, well, I want my speakers on the wall or in the wall to match the, the wall paint. Can you do that for me? 
yes, send us a swatch, send us the hex code for the paint color, we'll do it. So Triad, because we manufacture all of our wood box speakers in our factory in Portland, we can do any sort of customization, really infinite possibilities with sound bars and with box speakers. Now, the electronics product that we're going to talk about, that is manufactured overseas, like 99.999% of uh, electronics products nowadays, but it is designed, engineered by the Triad engineering team and by the Control 4 engineering team in Salt Lake City. Obviously, they had a close uh, relationship as Triad was part of the Control 4 family before uh, we merged with Control 4. So obviously, there's a lot of uh, engineering design work that goes on between both of those headquarters. So what are we here to talk about today? Obviously, Triad has customizable speakers, in-ceiling speakers, in-wall speakers, uh, high-end home theater speakers. But today, we're going to talk about the new PAMP 4 and PAMP 8 uh, amplifiers. A note about nomenclature. When you see PAMP 4 or PAMP 8, know that Triad names products over or around number of zones, not number of channels. So when you see TS P amp four, that is actually a four zone or eight channel amplifier. When you see TS P amp eight, that is an eight zone or 16 channel. So instead of doing the math of, oh, I've got eight zones, I've got 16 channels, is that enough? This allows you to essentially say, okay, P amp eight, I've got six zones, that's perfect for me. P amp four, I've got three zones, that's perfect for me. So we're trying to make it a little easier on you, but just keep in mind, P amp four, eight channel, P amp eight, 16 channel. Now you'll notice, uh, those of you who are familiar with the P amp V1 that is in the market today, uh, those are P amp four and P amp eight dash 100. These are P amp four and P amp eight dash 125. You have 25% more power in these little guys. Uh, so a note about that as well. That's into four ohms. So it equates to about 65 watts per channel into eight ohms, um, all in a one rack mount unit. So not a lot of real estate, a lot of power, a lot of, uh, a lot of performance out of these little guys. So typically you would use these in a distributed audio environment. They are dumb amps, so you would generally use them uh, on the back end of an AMS matrix, uh, a control four controller, if you only have a, a few zones of audio. Um, but keep in mind, there's not built-in matrixing. There isn't uh, built-in DSP. That would all happen on the AMS side. Removing that feature set from these amplifiers allows us to put more resources more, um, by resources, I mean dollar, but more resources in terms of development and engineering into pure audio performance. And we'll talk about what that equates to, but uh, you can use these for distributed audio, TV or small media room, or even a dedicated home theater. And the dedicated theater case, it's gonna be a, a, a little bit more limited in terms of power output, 125 watts per channel. You can bridge these to 8 ohm uh, to do about 200 or 250 watts per channel. So uh, pretty solid when it comes to dedicated theater amps, but these are a, a little bit more well-rounded on the distributed or smaller TV media room uh, space, but can be used for any of these uh, use cases. One note about distributed, that of course includes outdoor audio. So don't be afraid to connect these to some landscape speakers, connect these to some outdoor surface mount speakers uh, and really crank it up. You'll get the output you need for outdoor speakers with these amps. Now, new generation of P amp, you might be asking what's different. And if I go back, you'll notice this cool update we've done on the faceplate. It's actually a sandblasted aluminum, kind of give a more uh, uh, premium aesthetic on the front face, but does that really justify a new generation? There's a lot more we've done on the inside of these guys, starting with a complete redesign. Our priorities here were not only enhanced performance, but enhanced reliability. Sort of a sensitive subject, certainly a sensitive subject in the office. The PAMP first generation 
many of you may have been aware of the sort of epidemic reliability issues we had with a bad capacitor uh, in the power supply. That has since been resolved, but we certainly don't want issues like that in the future. So our number one priority in this redesign was enhanced reliability. We want these to be the most rock solid amplifiers on the market. In a second, we'll talk about exactly what we did to make sure that's the case. Two, 25% more power. So higher output, these play louder with less distortion than Gen 1. You can't beat more power. You can always use more headroom. And then lastly, to sort of back up point number one, we added a five-year warranty to all of the new P-Amp 125 V2s. So all of our electronics under the Snap-1 umbrella, all of our audio electronics at least, have a two-year warranty currently. The new P-Amp V2s will have a five-year warranty. We want to stand behind that complete redesign and put our money where our mouth is. Say, hey, if you have this thing five years down the road and it fails, we'll replace it, no problem. That's how, that's how confident we are in this product. That's how little we expect there to be any sort of reliability issues. So you'll probably see that down the road from more triad products. Again, premium product, we want a, a premium warranty, but for now it's the P-Amp V2s that are getting that five-year warranty. So back to point number one, it's very easy to say, hey, we rede redesigned these amplifiers and now they're more reliable. And just trust in the story and go about your business. Um, that's not really how we want to do business here at all. When we say we re redesign something, we want to be transparent and open with you guys and talk about exactly what we did. So you can say, did we really redesign it to be more reliable? Absolutely, we did. And here's how three points of how we did this redesign. One, we redesigned the power supply. We added about 50% more power to the power supply. And we actually added a feature called power factor control. And power factor control is essentially a, a technical way of saying this amplifier, the power supply can actually store power. It can store its surplus power. So when an amplifier is playing particularly dynamic source material, or when it's uh, cranked up, say you're having a, a party at your house and need a, a little extra power, it can take that power reserve and dish it out to the different zones as needed. Instead of, as with the previous generation and, and most amplifiers on the market, the amplifiers are essentially calling for instantaneous power, which can put a lot of stress on the power supply. If it doesn't have any reserve power to give, then it's just doing the work in the moment it needs to, to provide that power to the amplifier that needs it or amplifiers that need it. And that's, uh, that causes a lot of stress on the power supply, which means heat, which means shorter lifespan. So by giving 50% more power and this power factor control technology to the power supply, we are minimizing the stress even at high volumes for long periods of time. So a lot less heat dissipation from the power supply, longer lifespan. Basically, it's got a cush job now, when it, whereas before it did not. Number two, simplified design. So previously on the, uh, on the, on the previous generation, excuse my uh, redundancy there, we used nine circuit boards, eight for the amp chips, one for the power supply. This led to a lot of uh, extra components like wires and capacitors and resistors and solder points that we didn't really need. We were just using them to connect all these circuit boards together and getting them to play nice together. So with the new design, the new generation, we actually put all of the amp chips are on one circuit board. So that limits the number of these error prone components, wires, solder joints, all these different connectors, by minimizing those, we are maximizing our reliability and again, minimizing our failure points. And then lastly, individual amp standby. This is incredibly important. So you guys know the longer an amp stays on, the shorter lifespan it has, right? The hotter it gets. That's why we always have standby mode on all of our amps. In the previous generation, if 
one amp channel, or I, I should say, if all the amp channels were in standby, and I wanted to play music from my EA5 in my kitchen, the EA5 would send a, a let's say, analog output to the zone one input on, we're sort of bypassing a matrix, but you get the idea. It sends a, a source to zone one, my kitchen, the amplifiers to play back that music into my kitchen, those turn on. But when those turn on, all of the other channels in that amplifier turn on. So if I have a P amp eight, that's 14 other channels in the amplifier that turn on, even if they're not doing anything. They build up heat, their lifespan, Essentially, if you have a, a stopwatch or, or a, a, a timer for lifespan of an amp, that, that clock starts going. With individual amplifier standby, I can fire up music in my kitchen. It will wake up that zone, that kitchen zone one. All of the other amplifiers will stay asleep. I used a, a terrible uh, metaphor in the, the first session of imagine you've got six kids and one of them is very loud very rambunctious uh doesn't really care about anybody else so he wakes up at five o'clock in the morning and he wakes up all his siblings and his parents that's gen one now say you have another kid who's very polite very quiet very soft-spoken wakes up at five o'clock in the morning because they're able to entertain themselves and they're soft-spoken everybody else stays asleep that is the amplifier we're working with with Gen 2. You can fire up individual amp channels or zones and not have the other zones wake up. Again, minimizing heat dissipation throughout the rack, longer lifespan, uh, lower running temperature overall. What's great about that, we talk so much about heat with power supply and with these individual amp standby. You're not only affecting the lifespan of the P amp itself, you're affecting the lifespan of everything else in the rack. If you're ambient temperature from the new P amp is 20% lower than the old P amp. Obviously, this depends on how long you're running it, how loud you're running it. But if you can bring that ambient temperature down of the amp, it's going to bring the overall temperature of the rack down as well, which is going to mean longer lifespan for every piece of gear in the rack. So really exciting stuff. Um, again, putting our money where our mouth is and trying to be as transparent as possible about what we've done to ensure these are uh, giving you great audio performance for years to come. Now, of course, there's all the old features and benefits of the P amps that you all know and love. High performance ice power modules, digital class D architecture, global ins and outs, bridgeable, one rack unit design, rack years and mounting feed in the box. Again, we mentioned the 25% more power, the redesign for exceptional performance and reliability, but I also wanna to touch on this ultra high performance ice power modules bit here. For those of you that are familiar or are sort of in the audio space, you might recognize the name ice power. Ice power is a Danish company and they are essentially the Intel of audio chips, meaning all they do is design killer high performance amplifier chips, audio DSP chips. It's all audio all the time. They employ about 150 engineers. Uh, these Danish engineers that are rigid and love math, and that's all they do. We are using their newest uh, high performance module. It's called the Ice Edge Amp Chip. And if you see those specifications there, 0.00, .00 3% THD, so total harmonic distortion. The higher that percentage means the higher the distortion in your audio signal, meaning what I put into the amp, 0.003% of that is distortion on the way out. If you think about that, that means if I put in a signal into the input of the amp, 99.997% of what comes out is pure audio source, or I should say pure audio signal that is true to the source. The higher that number, obviously the more distortion. So you might see some really high performing amps at 0 0.05, 0 0.1. You might see some not as great performing amps at like 1% THD. 
0.003% THD is really what you would see in an ultra premium, you know, really esoteric high end two two channel listening room uh, type of amplifier. Ultimate performance, really otherworldly performance out of an amplifier chip. So we're very excited to be using the new Ice Edge modules. The second number there, 110 dB signal to noise ratio. Now this is one where the higher the number, the better. You want more signal and less noise. So on this decibel scale, we're at about 110 dB signal to noise ratio. And essentially a, a, a way of, of um, realizing this or, or a practical uh, use of this data. When I turn a, an amplifier on and I don't have a source playing into it, if I turn it all the way up, and I have speakers connected to it, typically you can hear some of that hiss coming through the speakers. The higher the signal to noise ratio, the lower that hiss is gonna be. So at about 110 dB SNR, I set one of these up in my house, did this exact test. With eight foot ceilings, I can really not hear anything. There's no hiss there. If a more value centric amplifier, 97 dB SNR, 100 dB, maybe even 105 dB, you can hear that hiss. So what you're getting is not just clean uh, replication of the input source at 99.997% pure with that THD number. You're getting the ultimate in dynamic range and low noise in the amplifier itself. So um, you can think of these numbers as certainly best in market, best in class by far. Uh, and we'll talk about that in a second. So not only are we making more power in these amplifiers, we're making better power in these amplifiers, meaning less noise, lower distortion, higher output. Now, all of us gearheads, we love kind of turning around the back of an amp and looking, what's, looking at what's in the back that kind of gives us the, um, uh, the illustrated spec sheet, as I say, it gives us all the IO, gives us all the features. So this is the back panel of the P-Amp 4. You'll notice four zones, eight speaker channels. The first zone has a global input on it that is linkable to all of the other zones, meaning if I, if I have an input on zone one, I can go over here to this switch that says link to global input. If I turn on zone two and four, it will send the global input, not just to zone one, but also to zone two and four. The zone three will still be open for any local source I wanna add there. So this makes it extremely flexible even without uh, a matrix on the front end of it. Global output, that's just a pass through of whatever's in the global input. So you can have uh, obviously a bunch of these amps daisy chained together. Uh, again, flexibility with or without uh, a matrix. 12 volt trigger in and out, uh, your power mode switch in conjunction with that always on 12 volt trigger or audio sense. Uh, channel bridging switches, you can bridge any of the zones. Again, we talked about that. It's great for uh, outdoor speakers or home theater applications. And then four pin Phoenix speaker outputs. So essentially one Phoenix connector per zone. Those Phoenix connectors can take up to 12 gauge wire. So like I mentioned in one of the sessions earlier, uh, if you're running 12 gauge wire throughout your house, I wanna do what you do for a living, but we wanna make sure for this clientele, uh, we, we have that in place for them. On the front end, uh, zone status LEDs, obviously blue means, hey, I'm an amp channel, I'm ready to go. Let's do it. Red means, ah, there's a short somewhere. I've got an overcurrent fault. And orange means, hey, I just need a break for a minute. It's getting a little hot in here, so I'm going to shut down for a thermal fault. But obviously, the, the name of the game here, the goal here is to color code those appropriately. So if you do get a call from a client, it's midnight on a Saturday, and they're saying, hey, my amp just shut down. Uh, you can say, well, what's the uh, front? What does the front LED say? Or what color is it? Give you really easy over the phone troubleshooting and you can say hey dummy turn your turn your amp down that said these will operate up into the 120 degree range before there's any any uh inkling of a shutdown then power status led 
blue means on, off means off or standby. We don't want to do a red LED. Makes clients think there's something wrong, makes installers think there's something wrong when the amp is just in standby. Now, a note on pricing. A uh, lot of discussion around pricing of these amps the last couple months. The current TSP amp 8 100 and TSP amp 4 100, we have put through some price increases throughout COVID to help us cover the additional manufacturing costs of these amps. We do not intend to do that with the new line. We know that we want to we want to keep that business. We know that we are priced competitively, even in an ultra premium space, even for a product that is above and beyond anything else on the market today. So we are keeping the price of the TSP Amp 8125V2 the same as the current TSP Amp 8100. We are keeping the price of the TSP Amp 4125V2 the same price as the current TSP Amp 4100. This can be somewhat flexible depending on where you're at in the world. So you might see a little bit of a price variance, typically downwards, but same or better is kind of the story here. We also still have stock of the TSP Amp 8100, the current model uh, in the warehouse, I believe globally. We will be taking the price of that down 20% when the new line launches in a few weeks. So you or your clients can have an option of, yeah, I want the best of the best. Uh, I want 125 watts a channel. I want the new Ice Edge Class D amp chips. Uh, yeah, I'll pay full price for that. Or if they're looking for a, a really good product at a great price, the TSP Amp 8 is going to be 20% off. Now, keep in mind, those are uh, here while they're here. And after they're gone, they're not coming back. So if you want a good deal on an amplifier, now's your chance to get one. Uh, the TSP Amp 8 100 will be in stock and likely in stock through the launch of the new one. So you'll have that uh, stratified uh, pricing tier. Now, speaking of uh, what's coming and when, as you know, the TSP Amp 4 100 in December of last year, uh, that went end of life. So that's been on back order for a while. The TSP Amp 8 V2 and P Amp 4 V2, we are hoping to get them launched by the end of July. We're looking maybe a couple weeks into August. I'm going to explain why that is in a minute. So those will come this summer next several weeks. And then in August, the TSP Amp 1 200 and the P Amp 8 100, the old generation, will go away. Now, August may be not a, a specific date, uh, just depends on run out. So that might go through September, but when they're gone, they're gone. So if you need them, get your hands on them. The TSP Amp 1 200 is a, is a good tool. It's a single zone amp, it's a two channel amp, but 200 watts per channel, so a little bit more power. It is uh, not anywhere near a big seller in the P-Amp series. So the eight and four are our best-selling amplifiers across the company. The P-Amp one just doesn't really make sense to keep it uh, in the portfolio. We've got a very similar solution on the episode side. We can send you in that direction every day as a suitable replacement. So. We're not losing anything by losing the P amp one, just one less skew we have to juggle and you guys need to uh, sell. So that's sort of the plan right now. Again, these dates are flexible. Uh, July, we're hoping for end of July, it's looking a little bit more like two weeks into August. Why is that? There's a process that we use here called inbound quality control. And uh, generally, with any mass production shipment, we open between 2% or 5% of the units that are shipped with that uh, mass production and check them, run them through performance testing, reliability testing, just to make sure that everything that was built in that lot is up to our standards, like we've been testing uh, with all the pre-production samples. We know that we've had a reliability issue in the past with the PM8100. We want to make sure that we are putting our best foot forward with these. So we are doing 100% inbound quality control, meaning 
every box that lands in our warehouse, we are going to open and run the amplifier through performance testing and reliability testing. That doesn't degrade the life of the amplifier. It just makes us uh, it makes us completely certain, 100% certain that these units are not uh, DOA or they're not dead after you know a few minutes of, of playback. So far, we've had really good success, um, but we wanna make sure that we are testing these through and through. So I'm okay pushing the, the launch of these a few weeks if it means we know 100% that these are great out of the box. And we think that you guys for truck roll purposes and your end users are gonna appreciate that extra effort as well. So when you're selling these, who do we usually compete against? Now I mentioned episode, it's a great sort of value uh, mass um, a customer solution, right? It's high value, sounds good, performs well, uh, it's reliable. Great, but it's not really on par with an audio control, an Anthem, a B&W. Triad competes more with the Sonance, the Savant, the audio control, B&W, Anthem, even NAD. When you think about smart versus not smart, that kind of eliminates some of these. You know, Savant is an AV over IP solution. This is a dumb amp. And Savant only has AV over IP solutions. So uh, something to keep in mind, the next couple of slides, you're not going to see Savant called out necessarily, but from a performance standpoint, price standpoint, um, it's sort of in a different different world because of that AV over IP. So questions? We're at 1235. So I want to make sure that we have enough time for questions, uh, comments. Tom, I just saw your uh, Wisconsin cheese head here. Uh, that's... Uh, that's great, but as a Detroit Lions fan, I can't be 100% on board with a cheese head, but we're all <laughs> fine. Uh, so you guys see my contact info. Again, we're gonna open it up to questions here, uh, but as Gary mentioned at the, the top of the hour, if you guys think of something a day or two or a year down the road, shoot me a note. I'm happy to talk shop with you guys. I'm happy to talk about what makes Triad better than anything else on the market. So please, please feel free to reach out at any time. All right, questions. Hi, Enrique. Yeah, Thomas also in the very beginning had mentioned he's from Massachusetts and wanted to have product to offer his clients. You know, I hope, is this, is this something that you're moving into or considering for the first time? Give us some more data there, buddy. Any, anything else? What do we got? Yeah, no, Enrique saying hi. You guys, are you impressed with the improvements or, you know, some of the attention to detail here? Ivan, Jeff, uh, Khalid, Kevin, we're open. Or cheeseburgers, just putting it out there. Yeah, we can talk. Not teams, though. We can't, we shouldn't go down that road. Yeah, I know. I know. early. <laughs> my, my bad. No, good guys. Um, Javier, Tom, uh, notice a couple of these. Ryan, you're on, on these with me. Um, any questions? Here we go, Michael. Um, remember, guys, I'll get the slide deck back out to you guys. I want you guys to pass this around. Um, uh, and also, Michael, um, what about the uh, the Cedia booth? We talked about that. Um, how's oh, yeah. this getting? How's this getting featured? Any kind of glimpses into what you're planning on with this particular launch there? Yeah, yeah. So these will be there. Obviously, uh, they'll be powering a couple demos we'll have in the booth. The booth this year is is really not just about Snap One product, but also the three P product that we distribute, so third party product. Um, but you're going to see it in a way that can show off these solutions in a really palatable, really easy to understand manner. We're going to essentially walk you guys through everything we do. You're going to see the benefits of the Snap One ecosystem, but also the benefits of high performance audio solutions like Triad like episode radiance, like the new triad uh, uh, sound bars, the custom sound bars that are out uh, 30 or 60 days ago. So really exciting stuff at the CDA booth. Please come by, I'll be wearing a shirt. Uh, we have special shirts for product managers this year. They say something like, do you have a question? Because I have answers. So look for me in that shirt, I'll be there. Hey, how much, how much, 
of our custom shop, so to speak, is 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 active throughout the year. I mean, is, is it it's always running on custom orders or yeah, you know, oh, yeah, because I yeah. consider Triad really that's where you know some of that sweet spot really is. And exactly, yeah. as far as our 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 partners are concerned, that's an option, right? You know, especially mm -hmm. sizeability, scalability, and so forth. Yeah, yeah. You know, we have stock products. Uh, to, to your original question, Gary, I mean, the shop's running year round. Uh, with the exception of holidays, there's always something going on. And we do the R&D there on the speakers. So there's driver development, there's testing going on. And then on the build side, there's always custom bars and custom speakers coming out of the shop uh, every day. So it, they're they're busy bees there for sure. Um, I, I I think that, that brings sort of a, a really good point that we talked about in the last session where there are exceptional audio brands out there inside the snap one umbrella outside of the snap one one umbrella there are there are brands that make exceptional loudspeakers cabinet loudspeakers so wood box speakers there are other brands that make exceptional architectural speakers there are uh other brands that do great electronics great amplifiers and then there are other brands that do really great customization and really a ton of flexibility in in soundbar width finish speaker design um, and triad does all of that we have the customization we have the electronics we have the great box speakers that are that are known i mean it's a 40 year old company they've been uh historically seen as one of the best cabinet speaker companies going we have exceptional architectural product in pdx uh, and some of the ic stuff so triad is is we talk about a premium solution, but it is a premium sort of boutique company that does all of these different things and does them all exceptionally well. So that's really when we talk about Triad being a unique solution, that's where it shines. It's in the ability to do all of this product and have it all live seamlessly together, um, which you don't see from any other companies. Got a couple of questions in the queue. You know, Enrique first he said hello, and then he then he's kind of commenting on a huge system with forty zones. I mean, how do we approach that? I, and we want to help, you know, and and really kind of plot this out. Also interested to see what his vision of this is as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, Enrique. I mean, we we have the Triad AMS products. We have the AMS sixteen. We have the AMS eight. It's essentially a, a multiplication of those. Um, uh, but yeah, we're interested to see, you know, what are your thoughts on how you would do that? Um, external audio splitters before audio outputs in the main controller. Not really sure what you mean there, but I'm, I'm sure it's a mix of matrices uh, and then sort of in-wall controllers and, and speaker splitters. Does the AMP controller have a mobile app? Oh, I skipped one, Brian, I'm sorry. Uh, new design looks great, awesome. Will the matrix follow this at some point? Yes, so the matrix, uh, we have it roadmap now to sort of take on this design and add some pretty cool features. So uh, you'll hear more on that at some point. Uh, Pre-orders will be available on this. Uh, we are working through the, uh, getting all that pricing in the system. So you should see that within the next week or so. Uh, and then we'll be taking some pre-orders. Cool. Uh, Thomas, does the AMP controller have a mobile app that allows the client to control what zone is selected, and what audio is being played in the zone via Wi-Fi or hard wired network connection? That's where control core shines and you can do a, a core one controller, you know, even a, a single one or two room solution. Uh, the control four app is killer. I have a, a 1600 square foot house, not a big house by any means, one TV in my house. You know, I work in I work in AV and I only have one TV in my house, but we run the whole <laughs> we run the whole thing on a core one and it's great. The control four app is incredibly intuitive, easy to use. My wife knows how to use it. Uh yeah, I think that's that's where control four shines. Let's see who else? Guys, I know Gary mentioned this, but if you're coming to Cedia please come to the booth. We will have all kinds of these products on live demo. We will show you how you can integrate these products into all kinds of different solutions. And frankly, I just want to say hi and meet you guys. And uh, we actually have a happy hour happening at the booth. So stop by. Uh, I'm going to get this wrong. 
I think it's it's one of the uh, I want to say it's Thursday afternoon. Uh, stop by the booth, have a beer with us. We'll talk some shop or not talk shop if you prefer not to. <laughs> nice. All right, uh, quarter up, guys. Last uh, last bit here for questions. A uh, great session, my man. Um, two sessions today. We uh, entertained well over sixty five guys today, which I love to see. That. Um, what else? I mean, we're excited about the launch. Try out the ecosystem. Let's continue to dive in here. I love getting the questions and seeing kind of where they're um, not just interest, but you mentioned, you know, app based uh, or you know, diving into the C four part of the programming. All this is available to you guys, and and we want to hear your feedback. We want to hear what you would really like and how to expand this stuff in in our jobs. You know, we've done so many jobs to this point. What are our future installs? Are what are they looking like at? Well, you know, this is primary. This is the brain of the operation right here, the amps. Exactly right. Yep. This is the backbone. Yep. Um, you know, aside from speakers, amps play the biggest part in audio performance. Uh, you have the the most noticeable difference in your audio performance or, or playback is within the amplifier. So will it be an update to the Triad One? Yes, uh, oddly enough, we are working on that as well. So um, I will say come to Cedia and you'll, I think be very impressed with what we're doing on the, the Triad One side. Nice. There, yeah. All right, guys, Michael, thank you so much for your time and your attention and your sonic details that I love so much. Um, you and the team, thank you guys so much. Um, everybody, um, you know, this is Gary. This is the weekly webinar series. Thank you for joining. I'm going to get back all of you guys in your inbox, not only the recording, but the slide deck. Let's continue to press on with uh, questions and or, um, you know, uh, availability, any, any issues that are going to come up with this launch. So we're completely behind it. Partner stores are doing well. C4, you'll see me hosting this uh, C4 uh, uh, happy hour show. So anything we can do to get more, uh, you know, more content to you, we can. I know you don't have a lot of time. I know your time is um, very precious. And thank you guys for joining. I'll be back next week. Uh, Michael and I will definitely be in uh, Denver for uh, for the uh, CD event, of course. Can't continue wait. to look. Yep. Continue to look at our event section for stuff that is that is happening in our um, partner stores right now. And in fact, right now we're running a tour at all locations. Just started our first two yesterday on the new Vibrant system. Michael, I mean, Alan, speaking on that, you know, did you get your hands on that at all? Or did you kind of Man, see that? Stuff gonna, by I, need you? To, I need to make a make my way to one of the tour stops. But yeah, I've been playing with it uh, in the in the lab, I should say. Uh, man, it's incredible. It yeah. makes me just makes me jealous that I. I think audio is, is very cool. Uh, I think it's the coolest segment we have, but it kind of made me jealous that I don't get to work with lighting more. Well, yeah, you know what happened? So yesterday was our first uh, uh, tour on the West Coast tour date. Um, it was funny, you know, it, in a way it's simple, okay, when you're talking about that type of lighting or, but it, it's so effective, right? It's, it's just so prominent yeah. now, you know, whether it's commercial or everything, or somebody's got the coolest house. You should have heard some of the install stories um, that these guys had and the upgrading that they wanted to do what what vibrant was bringing to the table but we're talking whole home glowing well you know and not overboard not i mean some people are that are that way right but how this is integrating and how just enhanced lighting is really coming into focus if lack of a better word but you know we are in other words our sound designers and we are uh, you know we're really looking at image architecting at this point our installers are and yes. it can really be a benefit there. And that lighting line is really cool, guys. Sign up today. I'm doing a full tour on that. Come in. But we're also, you know, any anything with these categories, with these ecosystems, you know, if you got questions on radiance and so forth and how to really, you know, dive into this category, that's what we're here for. That's why we're bringing these products out. So, yep, exactly right. Yeah. Uh, All right, guys. <laughs> If we're clear on questions, Michael, I'll let you go and give you guys back, uh, what, uh, 13 more minutes to your day. Check me next week and check the live stuff that we've got going on around the stores. Michael, thank you so much. Great job, buddy. Everybody thank else, you, check your inbox on Friday morning. Be safe out there. I know it's hot. Partner stores are always.